I invite the congregation to stand as we begin Ellie's service with a remembrance of baptism. I invite you to follow along in your bulletin. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We sing our opening hymn this morning in your red hymnals, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number 858. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, graciously tend those who mourn, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. good morning. 
Thank you for coming to Ellie's service as we gather this morning to celebrate her life. On behalf of Cross Lutheran Church, I offer sympathy this morning to Ellie's family and to all her friends who are here with us. I want you to know that we walk with you in your grief and your sadness, and we will continue to lift up Ellie's memory in prayer as well as to hold you all in our thoughts and in our prayers. Ellie's family invites you to join them following the service this morning to share lunch and conversation in the coffee room. Our first reading for this morning is Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second reading this morning is from the letter of 2 Timothy, beginning with chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. 
Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, there was that phrase that we read this morning, that crown of righteousness. What's that mean, anyway? It's from our second reading that you heard Paul's letter to a younger church. Actually, it's to the leader of that church, Timothy. And he's encouraging him to be a vessel that's fit for God's use. And so that verse is read from 2 Timothy today They speak about Christian service. They speak about hope, about fighting a good fight, keeping the faith, finishing the race. And so the crown of righteousness among Jews back then were these crowns and wreaths of leaves or even flowers. They were worn as symbols of joy and of honor. And of course, the Greeks made them and gave them to winners of athletic events. And so as I pondered and reflected on that particular phrase, along with the conversations that I had had with Ellie's niece, Wendy, and Ellie's friend, Diana, and also her friend, Trish, it came to me that Ellie most likely would have made one of those. She was that gifted in the arts and that in tune with the beauty of God's creation. And so whether it was designing or making banners or sitting at Stony Point on the North Shore or pulling over her car simply to watch horses graze, Ellie appreciated God's work in the world. And from the testimony and the conversation that I had with these three women who knew and who loved Ellie so much, whatever she took on, She appreciated, and she was thankful for. She engaged it with energy, but also with the gifts that God had given for her to use. She did fight the good fight, and she did finish the race. And I am trusting that God sustained her faith, too, as Huntington's disease really robbed her of a normal life. She was a pilot, she was a talented seamstress, a knitter, a well-schooled traveler, an excellent listener, a bookkeeper, a horsewoman. This is the short list of the God-given gifts that were given to Ellie. And the stories that I heard that were wrapped around these numerous gifts that she had also speak to the kind of person that she was. Because Ellie could have profited comfortably from all these talents that she had, but the stories that I heard speak otherwise. Because they really do bear witness. They bear witness to Jesus' words that we read from the Gospel of Matthew this morning, where we hear Jesus say, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So all of these gifts and all of these talents that Ellie had were humbly shared in one way or another to the glory of God. Her seamstress skills found a home right here at Cross Lutheran Church. She provided leadership and also a partnership in making and designing banners with Diana Border, all of which you see adorning down the halls, on the aisles there. All of those you see adorning our sanctuary this morning. And the first time that the funeral banner was used, it was for Wendy's mom and Ellie's sister, Jane. How poignant and how meaningful is that in God's timing? along with Ellie's humble sharing of all of the gifts that she'd been given. She made clothes for family members, hats, scarves, and mittens for people that were in the hospital or that were living in shelters. 
She taught Trish to knit, and I'm guessing she taught many others how to knit as well. I was told that as teenagers, her love of horses was shared with Trish, driving from horse show to horse show, and years later with Wendy as she provided her with riding lessons, which led to Wendy's participating in horse shows of her own, and then Ellie getting back on the horse at the age of 61. And so in Matthew's Gospel, read today, Jesus offers us this gentle and this easy yoke. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean for a second that it couldn't support those in need of what Jesus has to offer. Because Jesus brings a message of love and of a better life that his love may bring us, holding out hope, For all of us, holding out hope to people who struggled, like Ellie, people who may be weary of the cares of life, offering them what Jesus says can be found nowhere else. Rest for the soul. Rest for the soul. And so this ought to provide us comfort in grieving Ellie, where her dying may be seen as a blessing in the light of the challenges of what life was giving her, yet it doesn't make it any easier or cause us to remember her any less. And the good news for us this morning is that we can find relief. We can find relief from what is weighing on us in the grief that we may be feeling, Ellie had a lot to bear in the latter years of her life, but we can also trust in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. That fighting, that fight of good faith that she gave along the road of life in such challenging circumstances does not go, does not go without the love and without the gentle strength and that easy yoke that Jesus offered her and offers the rest of us. Jesus' own yoke in bearing our sin and his suffering and death on the cross gift us with forgiveness, with salvation, and with our own promise of eternal life. It also gifts us with hope. It gifts us with hope. So if the life of a Christian is to be measured in our becoming more like Christ, then Ellie fighting the good fight that went beyond her disease and preceded it in the life that she lived well before it. I was told her listening skills helped other people where words weren't always even necessary, or the love and the care that 12-year-old Wendy received from her when her own parents died. And in the words of Wendy, she said she was a lifesaver. She was a lifesaver and as a mother to me. We also read this morning Psalm 23. It's so well known and it's often read at funerals. It's attributed to King David, who tends to start his psalms with the scene around him. And in Psalm 23, it's green pastures, and quiet waters, those same places where Ellie found restoration and where she found peace. But Psalm 23 also captures David's trust and David's faith in God, who David sees as a good shepherd, guiding him in those paths of righteousness. And there's that word again. There's that word again, righteousness, meaning right paths, or being right with God, or acceptable to God, or living a life that's pleasing to God. Sometimes we do that, right? Sometimes we do it well. Sometimes we stumble, and sometimes we downright fail. But with God's help, we try. We try. Ellie did too. And what Ellie leaves is a legacy of people who love her, and who shared with me that in all the trying and gifts she shared, she made a difference. She made a difference. You know, I asked Trish what Ellie might hope for others in how they might live 
after her dying. And Trish said, Ellie would say this, just go for it. Meet the day and don't give up. Make the best of it and go from there. Sounds like fighting the good faith, finishing the race, and keeping the faith. Like following those right paths, using our God-given gifts of time and talent, and living a life most pleasing to God. Through God's grace that's been revealed to us in Jesus, we trust, we trust that Ellie has received the gifts of a resurrected life, having walked through that darkest valley where goodness and mercy follows, free of disease, made whole again, restored, wearing that crown of righteousness, of joy and honor, a winner, a winner in God's victory for her over death through Jesus Christ's own death and resurrection. Ellie, living in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God for Ellie and for the rest of us. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and love. We give you thanks for Ellie's life, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, for the memories we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. As a child baptized into your grace and mercy, remember your servant Ellie and bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your reign where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who who mourn. Give us patient faith in times of sorrow. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Bless the eternal life of Ellie and give us grace to use our time on earth in turning to Christ and following his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, because in his death, Our Savior, Jesus Christ, destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our recessional hymn this morning is Blessed Assurance in the Red Hymnal, number 638. 